Aquí lo tengo. Pero qué pedo. O se ve poca madre. No, no creo, güey, no mames. Se ve perfecto. No mames. Se ve perfecto. Uy, no, Órale. Mames, puta, estás grabando, cabrón, no mames. Sí, está un poquito no, prendido. Puta madre. Puta, se ve. Pero esa madre, padre. Qué pedo, qué cabrón. No mames, ¿qué? O sea, no, es, no es un avión esa madre. Qué pedo. No mames, cabrón. No lo veo. No. What did you see on the 6th of August? It was an enormous object that turned very quickly. I was at home. I went outside. I looked at the sky and saw an enormous object. Seeing it, I remained paralyzed. The only thing that I noticed is that it turned very quickly. The color was metallic gray. It was round. It moved oscillating and rotating quickly. It was there, above that building. Not in this, but in the middle of those three. Yesterday we showed a video on television. Did you see it? No. You haven't seen the images that are on the video? No. I only told my father, but he didn't believe me. He even started laughing, telling me that it wasn't true. But when you came, I said, you see that it was true? He said, yes, I see that they are investigating. Mr. Arturo Garcias, a restaurateur whose business is in front of the building where the abnormal aircraft showed, was also a witness. Suddenly, in those buildings, I saw something that moved so I looked more closely and I understood that there was something that was flying above them. You could see a type of plate that was floating in the air and moving in an abnormal way in respect to any terrestrial flying object. Another interesting testimony that supports the authenticity of the Las Lomas event was provided by a girl who was in one of the buildings above which the probable extraterrestrial object was hovering. Having seen the Maussan program about the Las Lomas UFO, she describes the phenomena that was not spoken about in the transmission. On the day of the 6th of August, I was doing some university work. I was taking some photos. At a certain point, I saw a very strange shadow. In that moment, I turned towards the sky and I saw a very dense solid cloud. I thought that it couldn't be a cloud, it seemed to be falling from the sky. I didn't understand what was happening. Then I realized that it was a UFO. I saw that it was solid and shone. It didn't have lights, but it was very bright. It was suspended, but at the same time you could see that it was turning very quickly, so quickly that you couldn't really see it rotating, but you could feel it in the air from all it emitted. You could feel that it turned. You heard a sound like a gas leak. Yes, constant and also as if it were oscillating. In that moment I noticed that all the pets and animals were as if mad. The dogs, the cats, running from one part to another. I was frightened. The dog's behavior made me react and I thought that I should take a photo. I tried to get my camera, but as there was a lot of confusion, I didn't find it straight away. When I got it, I turned to take a photo. I saw only a light that was going away very fast. You couldn't distinguish its shape anymore. It was more like a light, something shiny, silvery, very strong. I was wearing a short-sleeved top, and when I looked in the mirror, I had lines as if I had got a tan whilst wearing the top. In the course of the research conducted by Jaime Maussan and his team, other witnesses came forward who have confirmed the declarations by the witnesses that we have heard, and the case of Las Lomas is credited with ever more validity and proof in the face of criticism. 
making it amongst the most extraordinary cases of confirmation of the real presence of extraterrestrial civilizations on our planet. So, I've tested the image for its stability about whether it could be connected with a string or not. And I am very certain that there is no string that's connected, that it's moving on, that it's not like that, that there's no evidence that it's a fake. And it's not possible physically for a balloon to move in the way the object moves. The object is standing on an invisible column of force of some kind that holds it up off the ground. This is why, as it moves across the top of the building, it tilts back and forth. It's, it's moving the force field along to crawl forward. On balance, I'm quite sure that this video is authentic. The internet is, apart from anything else, an extraordinary method of information diffusion. But it can also be a very valid instrument of misinformation and discredit in the hands of those that wish to disavow and ridicule this very important phenomenon. It is necessary, therefore, to have great responsibility and discernment when considering certain items. An example is the case of a self-styled unknown American researcher called Liz Edwards, who, with a hazarded theory, makes out to have found a method in which, according to her, you could falsify the videos of Las Lomas even at home. The accusation is made based on only a few photos of a very low resolution, taken from the internet and without presenting any valid proof of the quality of obtainable results with her method. Through the explanations released by the Professor Quesada, we can get a clearer idea of what is required to carry out significant and thought-out research on any case to be examined. Up until now, this is one of the best films that I have ever analysed, and it is satisfying all the tests run, based upon which I can find no evidence of fraud. What people can say about an image they have seen on television is one thing. It is quite another to work, see the area, and be in the city where the fact has taken place. Speaking of what Edwards has proposed, would it technically be possible, or is it really a hazarded hypothesis? I would like to see the video made by her in that way and let it undergo the same analysis that we are carrying out. We want to work thoroughly. We must work at the source, or as near as possible to the original, possibly with a video that is not shown via Internet, because these are made up of photos of very low quality. Then they are also compressed to reduce the space they can occupy on the web page. That means that we can't carry out serious investigations sat behind behind a desk? I think that sometimes to research sat behind a desk is to deceive oneself. A true and serious investigator, to have information, analyzes all the evidence and sources that he possesses. The exceptional nature of the Las Lomas object is lastly proven by submitting the video image to the action of ultraviolet and infrared filters. In one of these tests, the object disappears momentarily from the screen, in this way manifesting incomprehensible properties based on current scientific knowledge. What we can see here is very interesting. With this filter, the object can no longer be seen. The only thing that we are able to see are the points of luminosity that it has in front and behind. Here, our visual spectrum is voided, and the only thing that you can see is where the object emits light. If this video were to have been a sequence of computer data, it would have remained more constant. It would not be very simple to make these variations. One eyewitness to the August 6, 1997 saucer was 13-year-old Cassandra. Can you show me where you were standing when you saw it? Podrías decirle dónde lo viste cuando estabas parado? It was in the middle of those two buildings. I was scared. Was it wobbling, floating? Se movía así. Primero, at first it was still, but was wobbling. Then after it balanced, it shot out toward the corner of the buildings, and then it disappeared. As our interview progressed, Cassandra told us that the object had been spinning, and that she thought she saw windows. 
She also revealed that right after the sighting, she told her father about the UFO, but he had not believed her. Had you seen the video yet? No. Have you seen it since? Sí. Is that what you saw? Sí. Don't you think that if there were a craft that large hovering over that building, that more than 12 people would have come out and said they had seen it? We have found 12 witnesses. If we could, if we want to look for more, we could find more. We continued to look. We questioned those familiar with the area where the saucer had apparently been taped. We looked from every possible point of view. We heard that there had been a sighting about a mile north in the wealthy suburb of Bosques Los Lomas. There we met Annie Lask, a young woman who had been on the roof of her house on August 6th. And she told us the saucer in the video had hovered directly over her. And how high above you was it? Like 20 meters. The outer rim was spinning really fast and the hissing. When I realized it was this weird thing on top of my head, I wanted to take a picture. And I turned to take the picture. I turned up and it wasn't there. And, but there was like this mist, like purple mist or maybe haze. After the saucer left her, standing in a purple staticky haze, Annie Lask does not remember getting down from the roof. Since that day, I had constant headaches, like every day, like really strong headaches. My eyes burned so bad. They still and, do? Yes, since that day. We've done a site survey in this exclusive neighborhood and believe that building is where the infamous videotape was shot, a building that denied us access. That's the terror. Jaime and his investigative team had been here before, but today, as we approached again, we couldn't be sure of what we might encounter. We, we were kicked out, I mean, aggressively. I felt that they were going to hit us. On this day, we weren't kicked out, we were locked out, and inquiries about what business was being conducted in this unmarked office building went unanswered. We attempted to interview people in the two condos so prominent in the saucer video. The exclusive complexes were like fortresses. At one, we were kicked out. At the other, we were escorted out. So we were forced to turn from investigating who had seen it to what it was. Allison Holloway interviewed David Froning, who is a propulsion engineer and 30-year veteran of McDonnell Douglas. What's your best guess of what this is? I think it's an intelligently controlled craft. It looks like it's, it's being propelled by what we call field propulsion, a propulsion or a mode of impulsion which we ourselves have not fully developed yet. This country has built a vehicle that, that are lenticular in shape just like that. They're driven by high-performance gas turbine engines that, that could kind of fly around in the sky just like this did. Uh, fact, so you're, you're telling me that we have something in existence like this already that looks what, like a It looks like saucer. that, it wobbles like that, right. but it makes a lot of noise. But we don't have anything that's silent. There's nothing like that's this. silent. When I sat down here and you said, look at this tape, the first thing you said to me was, look how close it is to the ground. And you didn't think it meant to be that, that low to the ground. Tell me about that. Well, they just, it was just, just an intuition. That I got the feeling that for a short interval of time, the craft was actually slightly out of control. In fact, that might have been the reason that it had to drift so close to the ground. The wobble that it's making, drawing on all your experience, does it look to you like it, it's out of control? Well, the wobble at on, the onset looks like an object suspended by a string. But then when you test it, it's not that. Also, many other videos of UFOs wobble like that. And what if it wasn't a real craft at all? What if the whole thing was a special effects trick created in an editing room or on a computer? We took the footage to Ray Raimondi and Fred Giarratana, who are special effects supervisors at the award-winning commercial division of Digital Domain, the company responsible for the special effects in the movie Titanic. Fred, smoking gun or hoax? Definitely. Smoking gun. Why the glint in your eye? Because I'm very excited to see this. It's, uh, to me, it's the most compelling footage I've, that I've seen. This is, this is, this might be the one that we've been waiting for. Ray? Smoking gun or hoax? Really good hoax. A hoax in well, which there was physically a crap over this apartment building or a hoax that was done in a computer generated lab such as this? Right. From what we've been able to look at, it looks like either it was done 
amazingly well from a, from a CG point of view, like in a, in a computer effects place or something like that. But I don't really believe it. There's just too many things that make it look like it was really, really there. It was photographed in the camera, meaning that it wasn't um, affected afterward. Like, for instance, when it goes behind the building, the, the way the edge breaks apart is kind of consistent with the way video consumer cameras just kind of break up on those edges. All right, so we're on the wide shot. If you can pull that back just a little bit, we're on a wide shot right here. And you can see a little figure up here to the left of this apartment right. building. Then if you let it roll, and as it goes, that figure, you zoom in, and the figure gets bigger. Right. Yeah, That's the, a difficult effect to do. Yeah, the first thing we noticed was just that if it was done as an effect, it was done seamlessly, because the zoom part is, it's natural. The hand-holding of the camera is all natural. And whatever that is stays exactly with it perfectly. How was it done? My theory in looking at it is it looks like it's being suspended from something above, like, like a helicopter. It's so far away and hazy that if there was a cable there, you wouldn't see it. Am I correct in hearing that you both agree this did exist over these buildings on that day when these pictures were shot. More than likely. You disagree whether it's a man-made hoax or a real deal craft of right. some sort. But how hard would it be to create a believable hoax? With a home video camera and their effect computer, Fred and Ray made this on a coffee break. What you're seeing here, this pie plate in the sky, um, we did literally in a half an hour. If this were for a commercial client or a motion picture client, we would have spent maybe a week with this shot. It would have been perfect. You would, have, you would believe it as much as you believe the, the Mexico City shot. We're doing this on a, this is a million dollar visual effects system here. This is the best, this is the best, this is Cadillac right here. So it, it doesn't come any better than this. But it's not the only one in the world. No, and, the, and, and I know there's a few in Mexico. It was a misty day. Who knows what all the mechanisms are available for stealth and cloaking of these kinds of ships. What if the pilots of this ship realized when the person shooting the video had them locked on, holy smoke, somebody can see us now, and they revved up their engines, got out of there. In the shadow world between UFO, Black Project, and hoax, there are no absolute truths. We may never know if the real danger is imaginary, coming from our own government, or most chilling of all, coming from the stars.